Minton Grad. Basically, if you're new to the game, you play that. Um, you can get credits and experience only after 10 battles played. So if you have more than 10 battles, you won't get nothing from this. So basically, it's for new players. And I'm guessing it's to also help um, test out the new bots, because that's one of the things that might be happening. Also, Rampage mode, there's a new mode for that. There's also two new maps implemented for that, and you can see one right here, which is Berlin. It is not in the tech or the training rooms, which is very upset, and it's not in rotation either. So you got Berlin, which is a nice looking map, and also you get this weird garage. I don't know if they're going to keep this garage because I don't like this garage. Like if it has this, that, that. I don't really like it. And the second map that they're implementing for the Domination Mode is Paris, or Ravage Capital, which is a crappy, crappy name. But I guess they can't name it Paris for some stupid reason. But yeah, that's basically the what's changed about that. So, sorry about that. So what else is new? Well, they renamed the IS-8 to the T-10, and they also modeled it correctly, I guess, to the T-10. Oh my gosh. There are some bugs going on, like if you zoom in very fast on your scroll wheel, it goes to the side profile. I don't know why, but that's kind of strange. But that's not a bad looking model for being a, uh, changed. I bet the statistics change, and if you're curious what the statistics are, this is fully elited. Or fully upgraded I think but you can look at the stats there um what else did they do other than HDing some tanks as you see here a lot of tanks are HD um if you look at the tech tree you'll notice for uh British the Centurion Action 10 has been implemented seen right here there's the Centurion Action 10 oh my Gosh, it has an eyeball. That is strange. That is a strange looking vehicle. But this is replacing the FV4202. But the FV4202 is still in game as a tier 8 premium. But for some reason, it is not here. I cannot get a tier 8 premium tank, which is sad. But, yeah. It's not a bad looking vehicle. I kind of like the way it looks. Oh, so not, it's not going to let me zoom in at all. Fantastic. Eh, not bad. I hope it plays good, but the stats are right there. 1,950 hit points. Top speed is 53. The Centurion can only move like 40 somewhat kilometers. 53 is a big improvement. Or 50 kilometers. Never mind. I was reading... Nope, top speed is 53. Turret traverse is 50, so it's pretty fast. Hull armor is 120, 50, 30. Eh, not bad. Kind of weak, but durable. Turret armor is 198. Not bad, I guess. Rate of fire is 6.98, which is pretty good. Granted, I don't have any crew skills, so that could change. And for the better, actually, so... But that's not all that has been changed around in the tech tree. If you let have, uh, if we have a look at the American tech tree, we can see that. Hello, where's the T18? What is an M3 HMC? And whoa, the T82 is not there. Oh wait, there they are. They're artillery now. The T18 has been changed to a tier three artillery, and the T82 is now a tier four artillery. But you might be thinking, ain't the T-56 the Tier 1 artillery? No, they changed it to the T-1 HMC. So let's look at the first artillery piece. I think it's adorable. Look at it. It's so small and adorable. I just love it. I can't wait to do an HD look at this thing because it's small, adorable, and cute. It has the same gun the T-18 has, the uh, T-15. 57 millimeter pack howitzer and I think it's cute because the driver sits right there and the crew sits around there I think it's adorable So let's go on to the tier 3 
Well, you can look at the stats if you want. The, it's not very impressive. It's only a tier t t 1, 2. But there's the T-18. So it's very good hull armor for an artillery piece. It's going to probably be a very strong artillery piece, but it's not a tier 2 anymore. It's now tier 3. So it can be penetrated by tier 3s and tier 4s instead of those autoloader tier 2s and maybe the oddball tier 1 thrown into the matchmaker. But its stock gun is the 35mm howitzer M1A1 gun. And that's the only gun upgrade you get. So, eh. I'm a little happy that this is implemented, but then again, I'm kind of sad to see it go, but it was well needed. This one, I didn't see a problem with, but it got a bigger gun, it looks like. This is the Tier 4 artillery piece. It used to bend the Tier 3 tank destroyer, I think. <sighs> now, this thing had a very powerful gun, but it got bigger. It used to have the 105mm howitzer M3. Now it gets a 105mm howitzer M4, which does a lot more... Actually, it does the same amount, but I think it fires faster. I just looked at it like... Yeah, oh. Hmm. But it's up to you. I think this is the better gun, but we'll see. I don't know. I kind of like this thing as the tank destroyer, but maybe it will be better for being an artillery piece. Not bad looking. Now, you might be saying, well, hold up, what's going to be the tank destroyers? Well, here's the tier 2. It's basically the M3 Lee's little brother. <laughs> it's so stupid, I love it. Like, it has the same gun as the T-18. It still gets the 75mm AT Howitzer M1A1, the same derp gun that it used to have, but its armor is a lot less, 15mm in the front. That's penable by Panzer IIs, T1 Cunninghams, and other low tiers. So it's not that OP brick no more, and it also has that very nasty tumor. Side armor is 12, rear armor is 6, so it, it's more balanced now. Like, yes, it can have that big derp gun, but it doesn't have the armor to protect it no more. So if you do want to derp someone in the face, go ahead, but you got to be more careful. Now, the Tier 3 Tank Destroyer, which is one of my favorites, because it's more unique. Like, I like this. This is basically the artillery piece that was previously the tier 2 artillery piece, but it's now a tank destroyer, which, I don't know, I'm kind of spectacle on the gun depression, because it doesn't look like as much, and also the left and right doesn't look good either, the angles of traverse, but we'll see. The front armor 38 is pretty nice, I think it's on the M5 Stewart's Hall chassis type thing. But I like the back of it. It's nice and open. Got the ammo box, which is a downside if you get shot in the back because 90% of the time if it hits that area, your ammo rack's destroyed and you're not so happy. But I like it. You got a choice of two guns. The the 57mm gun, which is nice. Has good penetration. But its damage is low, but it has a good rate of fire. This one has a good damage. Of good penetration, but its rate of fire is a little less. But we'll see when it performs in battle. I think this thing is going to be fun. Yeah, so that's basically the change up between the American artillery and tank destroyer. Everyone knew it was going to happen sooner or later, so yeah. Other than that, there's not much change in the um, tech tree. There's supposed to be the the Czechoslovakian premium tank being able to be tested, but it looks like it's not testable now, which is upsetting. Now, some tanks did get a buff, like the Jagdtiger 88 got a speed boost, which I don't have on this account because my account can't be on. Because in this current test, there is a bug on the test server where if you have more than one tank or more than like 12, it just denies you access for some stupid reason so I'm on a friend's account so I can get this video out there but yeah the British the Carvon and the Conqueror the stock turret is not the Centurion turret like the Centurion turret is the stock turret but you get the Centurion action 10 turret 
which for me is a letdown because now if you want to uh, play this thing it's a lot more different now I would pull up a comparison but there's oh wait I can um let's see can I keep that on the screen tech tree I can yes because previously it was the I think it was the Centurion's top turret I think but it could be this one. I'm so confused right now. Bear with me, guys. I'm not that good. So, basically, one of these Centurion turrets was on the Carbon. This one has decent turret front armor. Compared to these, it's better. Except for this one. This one has very good decent one. Better than those two combined. Which, but the problem is, this does not have a gun mantlet like these three. These have a very trolly gun mantlet, which can stop shells from penetrating. This does not, so I don't know. I feel like it's a nerf to your favorite British tanks. I don't want to go in battle. Stop it. Stop it. So I feel like it's a nerf. And it's also the same thing on the Caravan, or the Conqueror, if you have the stock turret. As you see here. The Centurion Action 10 turret, which I don't like. I don't like that they did that. I'd rather have the Centurion turret, but whatever. Maybe it'll be better, maybe not. We'll see. Um, Let's see, what else did they do? I click on wrong button, because buttons are cool. Um, They also buffed up the conk. The Carvan and the FV-4005's front plate, it looks like. They gave it its correct angle, they say on the, the, um, the website. Um, let's see. The Super Persian gets a uh, standard uh, increased penetration of standard shells from 120 to 149. So the Super Persian gets stronger in its gun penetration skills. The mouse... Increase armor protection from some sections of the gun mantlet, so the gun mantlet's more strong on the mouse. Um, the low also gets um, protection from the gun mantlet, so the gun mantlet on the low is better. And that's basically it. The KV-220 gets stronger, which I don't have on this account, sadly. And the T-54 prototype gets some changes as well. Which is upsetting because that's one of the most OP broken scout tanks in the game. But whatever. Another thing that they have done this patch is they are doing something I'm not too sure I like. Okay, let's give me a tank here. Where's my Tiger 2? There's my Tiger 2. See this tank? It's so pretty. Now... If you want camouflage, it'll take you to this screen. This is a new screen. Now, you can pick your camouflage. Let's say I want that one. Then you go over here, say I want seven days. Select. Then I'll say purchase, and then I'll purchase it. And then I'll get to this screen for some strange reason, and then purchase. All, for me, that seems unnecessary. Why do you need 50 billion selections and improve? Like, to me, that's too much, and it needs to be reworked again. I don't like the way it's set up, but it's improvement, I guess. But everything's neat. You don't have to scroll down to... Oh, gosh. Why is it only on the... E? I don't know. It's only on this tank. So it's much easier to find your camouflage. Let's go back. Now, camouflage is easy. Emblems. This is where it gets interesting. Increases complete movement for both stationary vehicles and blah blah blah. Winter two to seven days left. Okay. But this is where it gets interesting. I think they added a lot more decals to the list. But if if you see up here, plus one to commander. So if you like, let's say the paw print because I'm a fur, and I select that, you'll see that it will give me two percent to my loader. Which is cool. Now, if I want to put it on both sides, select. Now, it will increase to 4%. So, my loader is 4% more better than it used to be. And it is continuing on for the whole thing. 
if you want certain skills on certain tanks you can get it but some are less like this it gives you one percent to your radio operator I don't think anything is more than two because I, I scrolled through this and I haven't seen anything more than two but that's basically all it does if you want an advantage over other players and you just want that extra two percent and some like your driver gets two percent extra skills like it's not going to be much like I bet probably special like flags that Wargaming gives out will be more percentage like they were doing the Canadian flag and the Brazilian flag I bet those will give your commanders or crews a special bonus than they did have but I think that is cool but for a person that likes the historical flag on the tank it kind of is sad and I I'm because I don't want to have these icons on my tank if I just want the regular German cross well I guess I purchased them and insignias also give perks not much but it's only one percent so if I want let's say where's tiger I know there's a tiger in here tiger so tiger if I mount tiger on my tank it'll give my commander a crew skill now if I go to the other side of my tank and mount tiger it'll give me more crew perks so depending what you want, you can severely buff one crew member to a lot. Because plus one, plus one, plus two, plus two, so that's four, five, six. So you can have 6% boost on one of your crew members if you decide to do that. Granted, this is only for your commander, the words on the tank, which is kind of sad that they're not your choosing, but... But that's basically all that there is for that. I think it's interesting. I think it will be an interesting way to, you know, customize your tank. But for me, i rather just have the... How do I exit? i rather just have the German cross. Because for me, that makes it more realistic to me. Um, other than that, everything is the same. Except for the new domination mode, which I'm not going to test. And I'm not going to test out the bot mode, because I don't need to. That's basically it for this test server review. If I find anything new, I'll include it in. So here's the spot that I included it. And that's it for this video, I guess. Oh, wait. Fudge. Yes. And that's it for this... um test server view i hope you liked it and thank you so much for watching and remember to clicky click the like button and to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and i'll see you in more test server reviews because i have a lot of hd models i have to review a lot of them i'm very excited for the centurion action 10 review but other than that see you guys Bye bye